Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at your questions and comments from the Hyksos, Conquerors of Ancient Egypt. However, before we begin, just a quick reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Mythology tells us one thing, while history tells us another. Moving right along, our first question is from Lex. He asks, if the Hyksos weren't from Canaan, where then could they have sprung from? Lex, that is a tough call. Though I have no basis and my answer is purely conjecture, I would go with Turkey. Why? To the Egyptians, any people from Turkey would be considered Asiatic. However, I sincerely believe that the Hyksos were from Canaan. Keep in mind, for a major part of their history, Canaanite cities were vassals of Egypt. Our next question is from Magda. She asks if I think there was much intermarriage between the Hyksos and the Egyptians. Magda, excellent question. Though we have no way of actually knowing, I think there was much more fraternization than is believed. Let's face it, pretty new girl in town, she looks exotic, well you know. Let's press on. Our next question is from Diego. He asks, if the Hyksos did not have some type of military superiority over the Egyptians, how could they conquer and stay in Egyptian territory? Diego, you are preaching to the choir. I do agree with you that the Hyksos had military superiority over the Egyptians. I especially favor the notion that their chariots and horses were much better and more maneuverable. I also concur that they were armed with better weapons. Next we have an interesting comment from Terry. Terry points out that existence in Egypt is totally dependent on the Nile. If the Nile does not flood, there is no abundance of crops. Crops feed not only the people, their livestock as well. Terry well said, the Nile was truly the lifeblood of ancient Egypt. Not only did the Nile serve as the food source for the Egyptians, there was more than an abundance of crops. This windfall promulgated trade with the neighboring kingdoms. Let's press on. Next we have another interesting comment. This time it comes from Gracie. She goes on to say, mass exodus from Egypt? Who were the foreigners in the country? the Hyksos. The Egyptians were renowned for their architecture and building skills. They did not use Hebrew slaves to do their labor. These days it is generally accepted that the builders of Egypt were skilled craftsmen. This puts an end to the false narrative. I think you get where I'm going with this. Yes, Gracie, I do. I believe there is something to the forced departure of the Hyksos and the biblical narrative of the exodus of the Jews out of Egypt. Perhaps only coincidental. However, I am inclined to be in agreement with you. Let's press on. Uh, our next question is from Samantha. She wants to know more about the chariots of the Hyksos and what made them superior to the chariots of the Egyptians. Well, Samantha, that's a great question. The Egyptian chariots were much lighter in construction. They could only carry two people max, one being the driver and the other a spear thrower. On the other hand, the Hyksos had heavier chariots that could carry more weapons and possibly even a third person. They could unleash a barrage of arrows from their compound bows, which were more powerful and could travel further than the bows that the Egyptians may have used. For closer in attacks, the better weaponry, such as spears and swords, would also give further advantage to the forces of the Hyksos. Let's see, next we have a question from Jason. Next, Jason brings up a very interesting point. He said that the word scythe stood out in his mind. Since this is a tool used to cut wheat, it is logical to assume that the people wielding the weapon had some connection to growing wheat, or at least very close ties with those people who were farmers. Jason, you have brought up a very interesting connection that now has me thinking. I definitely think that just about any idea is feasible to associate the Hyksos based on the simple fact 
that we know so very little about them. Okay, time for one more question. Our last question is from Lenny. He asked my opinion as to why the Hyksos did not continue to invade further south. Surely Egypt was ripe for the picking. Lenny? Tough to know for sure. Perhaps the Egyptians were able to regroup and form some type of defensive perimeter of containment against the Hyksos. Perhaps the Hyksos were hesitant to overspread their supply lines. Once again, we just don't know. This brings us to the end of part two of the Hyksos, Conquerors of Ancient Egypt. Just as a reminder, we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have also included our email address and Instagram information. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. Traveler's Tales will return with What Happened to the Philistines? Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and history, Cartistos.